So that's per one particular issue. Um, anybody else have an issue to share that's a roadblock, barrier? Uh, I think transportation is a big, mm -hmm. a big issue. Mm -hmm. We don't have buses that go to the places they need to go. Mm -hmm. We don't have a bus that goes to the free stamp office. We don't have a bus that goes to the driver's license office. So they're kind of stuck pretty much on the beach because that basically is where our buses ride. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. There isn't even a bus and that leaves the jail. And even if you gave them a bike, Mm -hmm. It's too far away for them to travel, mm -hmm. to get there in enough time to do the business they need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the DMV is all the way on Highway 67. Yes. Bus doesn't get you anywhere close mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. So unless they find someone who will bring them there, um, they really can't make it there. Yeah. And um, Golf course a one mile walk from the bus stop to the DMV. Yes, they mm -hmm. still have to walk. Mm -hmm. But you know before COVID you have DHS and you have some other agencies that are actually located that the bus doesn't go by which doesn't really make any sense but they did build a sidewalk that they you could walk it. on <laughs> to so get, many people were getting hit to get to DHS <laughs> wow. which is safer but there's no transportation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's another <clears throat> roadblock for them. Mm -hmm. And that's so. a major resource center. I think yes. that the resource centers, all resource centers, should have a route. Yes. Mm -hmm. Each bus system should have a route to a resource center. Yep. That is yep. definitely a necessity. But I don't know. The way society works, or I think it works from my perspective, is you can get one thing done, but when you try to go to the next, it kicks you back to step one. Yeah. And, you know, and that's why I believe that a lot of so many people are stressed and depressed. For one, money is an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you get a job without an ID? So I don't have the income. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue. I don't have the transportation if I do find a job to get back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just, it's a catch-22 when, especially when we're trying to do everything that we can, but we are also limited, too, to the resources that we can provide. Yeah, and, you know, like with CTA or with the bus with the bus company here locally, they took away one rides, the dollar fifty rides, the cheap rides that you could get from here to there. Mm -hmm. Now you have to purchase one day passes, six dollars. If you want a one month pass, say I got employment finally, I'm gonna need a lot of bus. It's fifty dollars. Like who pays for that? You know, it's it's very, very expensive and then then you think about mental health. So many of our unsheltered or even housed have mental illnesses. And say Biloxi to to Pine Belt is a two hour bus mm -hmm. ride. How do you tell somebody with severe anxiety or bipolar or schizophrenia, get on the bus and ride for two hours, mm -hmm. good luck. And then the other facility is in Gautier, and they don't have a bus that goes there at all. So if, even if the bus goes there, doesn't mean the people are able to ride it successfully. Or get there in time for their appointments. Or get there in time for their appointments, yeah. yeah. And this isn't just here on the coast. I mean, these are situations that surface in every other mm -hmm. major city, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's always complications with transportation, with money, with IDs. Mm -hmm. So even though the coast kind of stretches out, and I think we, we don't have a lot of density, mm -hmm. and we have a population, what, maybe 350, 400,000 on the coast of Mississippi, um, it's, it's a community that's spread out Very. Mm -hmm. um, along a 45-mile radi radius, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. other, other complications or challenges um, that's been transportation, it's IDs, mental health issues. Maybe you want to talk more about that. Mm -hmm. um, mental health issue providers are really a, a struggle across the country mm -hmm. and access especially for mm -hmm. people who don't have resources. Yeah. And then well, medication. <clears throat> Yeah, mm -hmm. well, before they were, if they went to the mental health agency in Gulfport, it was a $30 intake fee. Mm -hmm. Where do you get the $30 from? Mm -hmm. yeah. Plus trying to get Medication. there, but, you know, it took money to get there. Mm -hmm. And then also you couldn't call to make an appointment. You'd have to go there mm -hmm. to make an appointment. At like 8 o'clock in so, the morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, we can only give bus passes for doctor's appointments, so we had to have something that showed that they had a doctor's appointment. Well, they didn't even have mm. it because they have to go there first. So how wow. are they going to go there first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's really sad because a lot of unsheltered people say, especially women, women in homelessness is a really interesting thing, but especially women say they won't take their mental health medications because it makes them very drowsy mm -hmm. and very sleepy. And how do you protect yourself if you can't hold your eyes open? Right. So, or a lot of people will steal your mental health medications, mm -hmm. especially the good ones. Um, and then who pays for the mental health medications? 
unless you get it through our local HCH program, that's the only place you can get it for free. And their doctors are so backlogged to get in to see the psychiatric doctors. Mm -hmm. um, it's a long wait, long, long wait to see a doctor. Health is definitely a big issue as well. Like, we got clients that can't even really afford an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they, and it's sad because, I mean, an antibiotic, I mean, that's just to cure, like, a, a, a small portion of maybe some type of infection or anything, and it could be $1 or $2, mm -hmm. but that's a lot to someone who's homeless. Yeah. Yep. That is a big amount to someone who doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. So I think that when um, – I think that a program like should be created for just specifically homeless. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. they need help. Yeah. They deserve help. Mm -hmm. Just like everybody else do. Any any no matter if you're homeless or not, I think that everybody deserve some type of health benefit. Agreed. Well, there is something with people that were HIV positive, right, that's still there, the Ryan White Act. Mm -hmm. They need something similar. Mm -hmm. For people experiencing homelessness, that their medications can be covered, right? Because yeah. yes. if you get, if you have somebody schizophrenic, bipolar, anxiety disorder, any of those disorders, if you actually help help them to whatever is normal, right, mm -hmm. that they they might be able to access other services. Yeah. It would make it it would make it easier, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, so that's and that's providing a great shelter. Idea helps them stabilize medically. They don't do the emergency room. It's, I mean, it's a statistic. It's proven that if you shelter somebody and house them, their health stabilizes, sometimes for the good and sometimes for the worse, but at least they're sheltered. But you do find that their, their health tends to get better. They can eat better food. They have options to cook rather than eat out of cans. Like, mm -hmm. they just tend to stabilize out more, and, and especially with their medications, especially mm -hmm. if you can get them on their medications, provide them services, get them the right food, and, and doctors, and, and an address. Like, mm -hmm. where, because they have pharmacies for when you're, they'll, they'll mail it to your house. Mm -hmm. So, like, if, the, if, if you live in Gulfport and your medicine is sent to Biloxi through the HCH program, how do you even get it? You can't even get it. But now they can deliver it to your home if you have a home. Right. Uh, we can get it here at the day center, which is a blessing. We can get their medicines here for them. And, of course, the pharmacy for Coastal Family Health is across the street from us um, where they can get their medication for free mm -hmm. if they go down and enroll at Coastal. They can get their medicine for yeah, free. Yeah, and Coastal Family Health is one of those organizations that we partner with, right? Mm -hmm. And they actually, across our gulf of the dug-up area, right, construction mm -hmm. areas, Coastal Family Health, yep. too, mm -hmm. that they can access health services. Yeah. But. and they're a blessing. And they come here. They have a case manager that meets with them here. They'll come to them. They'll make the appointments. Uh, and they really do work hard. I think they work very hard for the homeless. Mm -hmm. They really do. Yeah. yeah. They also help those um, to that speaks another different, like a foreign language. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working with a program that a lot of my clients are of a different language. They yeah. speak Spanish and um, one of the uh, doctors there at Coastal Family Health partnership with me and, you know, are helping people who speak another different language, you know, to make sure that their health and stuff is intact. Right. So, yeah. That's great. Well, what are some of the joys and blessings of what you do here? There's so many. So yes. many. I think when they <clears throat> get over a hurdle, mm -hmm. when, when they've succeeded getting something that they needed, it's, you yeah. just celebrate with them mm -hmm. you know, because it's so hard for them to get there. Mm -hmm. and, and it, it took so long. It took so much work, yeah. Yes. And for us, it may not be a hurdle at all, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It may be just kind of a normal part mm -hmm. of, of our lives as people that are sheltered, right? Mm -hmm. And for them, mm -hmm. it's like, wow. They succeeded. Yeah. It's they got an ID. It's, it's like when they come back and they say, you never gave up hope. Mm -hmm. You never gave up on me. And we've had somebody recently say that that's been clean for over a year from intravenous drug use, clean, sober, married, has two jobs, and is back in school. And she, she told me, you guys never gave up on me. Mm -hmm. We never judged you. We never gave up. Every time, every, every time she'd come in and ask for help, we provided. And it this was over years. Years. It wasn't just like it was a short period of yeah. time. It was years. And mm -hmm. we... Every time she came to us, we would sit and listen, mm -hmm. wow. and we would set where, 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 whatever place we found, we would set it up. Mm -hmm. She, she didn't go, but the next time we did yeah. it again, we just kept doing it. And Drove her two hours to rehab in the middle of the night. Yeah, she walked and out then the she next came day. Back. The next day, <laughs> so. But yeah, yeah. I think when we see those little successes, mm -hmm. it makes it, it makes it every day to yeah. want to keep coming back and doing it. And we had. Um, this lady that came in and she was looking for a job she was sitting at that computer 
every time you saw her in here, she would be sitting at that computer looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And she decided to go and apply at Engel Shipbuilding. So mm -hmm. she signed up for the training. Now, when you do the training, you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. So this is a lot of time for her, and also she had to get a part-time job. And if you don't know, Ingalls is in Pascagoula, and it's a ride. It's mm -hmm. not a hop, skip, and a jump. No. Um, so she came to us and said, look, I gotta have these items. So Lucy in the clothing closet, she got all the clothes that she needed, and Lucy used to work at Ingalls, so mm -hmm. she kinda knew what she was looking for. Little things like, you can't wear these kind of buttons, they'll catch on fire. We're like, what? <laughs> catch on fire? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so she got her the clothes, and then she needed these really heavy-duty boots. So luckily we have a, a, a grant that we received that helps us buy item, work items mm -hmm. for individuals who need them and can't purchase them on their own. Mm -hmm. So we went and got her the boots and um, she came in, got the boots, got all everything she needed. And she actually came in yesterday. She um, passed the training course. She's working full time. She's working 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. And um, she's now looking for a place. She's applied at different apartments. She's doing really good. And just those, I mean, just to be able to talk with her when she comes in, she was getting her mail and she has a little stack of mail. Um, wow. But she's just doing so good. Mm -hmm. And she, she knew what she wanted to do and she was determined. And with, you know, the help that we could, you know, give her as far as getting the things that she needed, now she's... She's on the road, and yeah. she's so sweet. She's just a lovely woman, and I, that was definitely a joy for me yesterday. Wow. I had a client, I'll never forget it. We had a life skills class, and because uh, we do life skills classes, and um, they had this pie graph, and we were filling it in, and it was broke down into the thirds, and you were supposed to fill it in based on where you were at. And it was about having like a social circle or somebody that you can call in a time of need. And he was just sitting there staring at it, and I said, Hey, you're not going to call her in at least one of those? And he stared at it. He says, well, I don't have anybody. I said, we well, have me. That's one third of that little pie graph. And he said, I have a somebody. And I've always, it's always stuck mm. with me. I always want to be somebody. And I always want them to know that they're not alone. And when they, when it clicks that it doesn't matter what you do, because we tend to push away people because we're forgotten about, or that's been our life experience. Mm. Like people push back at us or they don't believe in us or whatever. When that clicks there, that back bay or the case managers or whoever it is, we're not going to quit on you and they get it and they start to trust us and treat us like family and we treat them like family. Mm -hmm. I think for me, that's the, like, there's a genuine care, I think, here at Back Bay. Like, if we don't see somebody for a period of time, like, we're going to go digging. We're going to mm -hmm. call the police department, the hospitals. We search the jails. We, we, we ask all the homeless. We haven't seen them in two weeks. Do you know where they're at? Like, yeah, yeah. where there's somebody. I think that's the joy for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say mine would be, um, my joy would be being able to learn from them. I would never, mm -hmm. I would never would have thought that working here at Back Bay Mission, so many of the clients have taught me so much. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate it. And I always go home and tell like my family, my mom, you know, like what I have learned from them. Yeah. And it, it gets me excited because it just lets me know that everybody is somebody. Mm -hmm. And no matter on what side of the fence you are, somebody is still able to teach you something. Yeah. You can still learn from either sides of the fence. Whether you're homeless, whether you're not homeless, it doesn't matter. You know, you still have, you can still imprint on somebody. Yep. So a lot of them have imprinted on me and I enjoy it. I really, really do. Mm -hmm. It's very humbling. Yeah. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And it really puts your life, I think, into perspective when we complain about little things like, yes. it's 74, it's hot in my house, or, you know, I even I caught myself the other day, yesterday at Subway, we're having pouring down rain and puddles, and I stepped into one, and I was so mad, my shoe was wet, and my foot was getting pruny, and I'm like, I can't believe I have to come out here and get a sandwich in the rain, and I'm like, people are living in this day in and day out, tents are not waterproof, and I think, for me, it keeps me very grounded and humbled, and makes me very appreciative of what I have, mm -hmm. and what I'm able to give others, and what's interesting, though, is that the people with the least give the most. Yes. Right. Yeah, I love to see true. that. Yes. Mm -hmm. They had stimulus true. money and people would come in and buy things for other yeah. guests mm -hmm. and I mean I got stimulus money. Did we spend it on anybody other than ourselves? Mm. Yep. See and it also puts you in a perspective where you can do like I do self judgment. Like mm -hmm. I look in the mirror. Like I, I can look in the mirror sometime and be like, 
you a complainer. Yeah. <laughs> Stop whining, we have it good. You are really exactly. a complainer. Like, you really, yeah. really have yeah. it set yeah. and made. And you have mm-hmm. people that just, let, when I look at them from that point of perspective, it just shows me, like, they are really, really strong people. Very. Yeah. Resilient, mm-hmm. strong. They are really, really strong people. And I'm like, I got to get like that. Like yeah. <laughs> We went in the woods the other day after the rain, Reverend Pennington and I. And we go out in the woods, and I've been complaining about these swarming termites. Oh, my goodness. They get in the house. I just can't. They just crawl. Or it's, oh. But then when we were out there, I think there were 700 mosquitoes, and then there was a cotton mouth, and that for me put it in perspective. I would not want to sleep on the ground next to that cotton snake. Cotton mouth. No. Don't even want to walk in the woods with it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, no. Yeah, it's a definitely a perspective yeah. about keeping yourself in check. I yes. think a little bit. Yeah. Well, then even thinking about that, because I was I was shooting text because I was late for this filming, right? And I'm I'm sitting in my car at the Beau Rivage after a nice meal, you know. For, yeah. So what? What do I have to worry about, right? Mm-hmm. It just, yeah. I, we do. We become complainers, mm-hmm. and and it's it's kind of a reset, recheck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As as we work with the people we work with to realize, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Be grateful. Be thankful. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 